Hey, everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing great. I'm doing great. I am with Eric from Sage News. Eric, how you doing? Hey, how's it going, buddy? I'm ready to crush it. How about you? We're going to talk about some uh, container prices or dropping. Yeah. So I know you talk a lot about you. We, you were going to do, there was inflation, then there'd be deflation, and then there'd be uh, hyperinflation, basically, some of the stuff you talk about. So we're kind of looking at the future here. So I'm going to go to share screen real quick. And what we got is spot market pricing for containers. So basically what happened was, and I'll show them right here. Let me pull this up, make sure you see. Um, at one point we were up here at $20,000 and then it dipped for some, um, you know, your average, your holidays and stuff like that. But the dip that we're kind of looking at now, which is going to start to cave is this dip. So the week of the fifth, that area, it was 18,000 and then it dropped down to 14,000 over a week, basically. Um, and then it's down to, uh, just, you know, 14,185. And then what I'm, what we're kind of probably going to be seeing because of the holiday, when this comes out again, is going to be another dip because of holiday. Now, can you explain why it would dip because of the holidays? Well, basically, it's, as everybody goes on their holiday for uh, Thanksgiving and stuff, uh, the, they slow down the ordering, right? So they, when they place the ordering in, so normally you have your Black Friday and your your um, goods come in then. Well, those goods have probably already come in or they're they're trying to get you know on the boats that are in the ports. So there's no need for them to order more because those goods aren't going to make it by that time. Okay. So now they're probably holding off on ordering because the Christmas goods should already be at the distribution centers. Um, so they don't need to order more. So then it kind of dips down for January and February. March seems to be your, your lowest for the ports. Okay. So you're okay. going to start to see these container prices go down. Um, and then a volume should start to also go down. So trucking would also come down also. Okay. Now, are, how far back are you able to do that chart that you're touching right now? Are you able to go back like a year or multi-year? Yeah. So basically what we're looking at right now is the green line is um, last year, 2020. Okay. So last year at this time, a container price was $3,335. Okay. August of this year, it was $18,000. So if we go back last year, uh, this week, last year, it was like $3,874. This year, it's still $14,185. So that's still a monstrous markup in container prices. But just a, a couple of weeks ago, like two weeks ago, yeah. we were at $18,000. So it dropped. It was a pretty good drop. Um, On a percentage basis, that's a huge drop. But what, huge. what's interesting to me is that looking at the green line last year, there wasn't a price fluctuation on a percentage basis like what we're seeing right now. Right. We have we have pops and, and ups and downs, ups and downs. When normally you would it's it would be this consistent base with very little fluctuation. Here we see the 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 wavy lines, the ups and downs. And that's kind of where we are in regards to goods coming in, goods going out, goods coming in, you know what I mean? Trying to get those numbers to to stay that consistent flow, which is makes businesses profitable, consistency. Now, Something that comes to mind as I see this is um, where shippers are going to seriously start to hedge themselves because, you know, there's that fear as, as things were getting more expensive. But now that it looks like we've topped and did that official top come in between August and October right there? What I'm seeing that was yeah. the top, right? Yep. September. So you had September. Uh, it started to creep back up August and then September it started to creep up and then it started to come back down again. OK, so so with the topping in, in September and and consistently since September till now. So we've got two months of falling shipping container prices. What I believe we might see is some fear um, and some hedging on shippers uh, saying, right. Look, what, let's hold back our shipping right now. And maybe because next week it might be even better. It's, right. And so that could actually become more of a self-fulfilling prophecy, the collapse in the price of shipping containers. Right. Now, here's something that I want everybody to understand. And your people, you know, they're getting some of this stuff first based on my knowledge is that March is your lowest usually for shipping containers. But this year at the ports in Long Beach and stuff, we have contracts, union contracts that are going to have to be renegotiated. Yeah. Those contracts, freight forwarders are going to look at that and be like, whoa, I don't know. If they go on strike, we're in trouble. They could front load a ton of freight uh, then, which would basically do the same thing because they're going to worry, be worried about striking and shutting down of that port. 
that's something to think of if those you pay attention to kind of how those uh, negotiations are going. If that happens, that would cause the price of um, shipping containers to rise again, wouldn't it? Sure would. It sure would because it's going to force a ton of volume into the system, supply and demand. And we're going to be, if we don't get the problems fixed that we have now, by that time, we could be looking at the same thing over again and possibly could be worse. Yeah, real quick, guys, uh, everyone out there in Ninja Nation, I'm going to put a link to Sage's YouTube channel in the comment section below. Go follow him. Give him a like, thumbs up, help his channel blow up, because these are kind of things that we want to keep bringing you in real time to show this, because there's a lot of uh, business owners in this uh, on this channel right now that are watching right. these things, and it's it's very important information. And that should be Ju June, July areas when that contract should be renegotiated. So they're going to, shippers are going to want to, going to, they're going to want to get ahead of that if they feel that contract's going to be held up at all. They're going to get ahead of that. So you can see volume kicking off again in March and April when normally that should be the slowest time. And that, again, we might not be fixed from where we're at. So in your opinion, uh, being a freight freight broker yourself, uh, yep. where do you see, see this uh, going into spring? If you had to guess, I know you're not a financial professional, but where do you yeah, see? Yeah, not a financial professional. I, I see that the issue in regards to what we're doing at the ports now, it's not getting fixed. The decision and the management of that, of how it's being handled there is, is, isn't very good. Okay, and they're okay. just sweeping it under the rug. So I don't see it getting fixed. Um, by the if So we have like another storm coming up, which could be another storm like we had, just instead of us all, you know, getting sick, this one's different, a different, a strike situation, but you could still have that shutdown for a couple months, which could still put us into that. So it's going to be truly based on monitoring the situation between the contract negotiations with the port and the unions and seeing how that goes. And that is going to play a big part that people like me and freight forwarders are going to pay attention to that because we're going to need to know, because I mean, and a quick thing, just so everybody knows, this is another one. This here is um, U.S.-China trade war, basically. Who dominates global trade? Well, in 2000, all of this blue was us. We dominated world trade. Well, in 2018, we don't dominate world trade. Yeah. And now all of the red's dominating world trade. And why this is important is we get a lot of stuff coming in, and we don't ship a lot out. And we have another thing we'll probably talk about in the future in regards to one of the largest things that's happening and we're not a part of it, but we're going to hold off on that one and let people we'll give that one a little later. Yeah, I think that's great. And, and again, guys, remember the economic ninja, my goal is to make other people more successful than me. And I have a goal right now of getting uh, sage news over 10,000 subscribers uh, by the end of December, guys, let's go do this. Like let's blow up more channels, people that are telling the truth, people that are warning people that are giving you really good fundamental ideas of how to protect yourself, your family and your communities. And, uh, Eric's been just crushing it. So uh, again, we're going to make this short, Eric, thank you so much for coming on again. Thanks for having me. And like I said, I, I, I won't let you guys down. You come over, you subscribe. I'll give you as much information, honest truth that I can. We just got to we got to be prepared. And between the ninja and me, we're out there preparing people so that you can benefit from these times when, you know, when other people have missed the boat. Absolutely. The little pun there. Did you get my little pun? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. With that being said, guys, be prepared, not scared. The economic ninja is out.